Are you also a student that has way too many things that they want and need to do and do you sometimes struggle to keep an overview? Then make sure to watch this video. Hi, my name is Joelle. I study educational sciences and on this channel I talk about all the proper science-based stuff that you need to know to be the best student you can be with the least amount of time and stress possible. So actually today's video will not be that much about science. I actually already talked about the science of goal setting in my latest video, which you definitely should watch if you haven't done so already. But in that video, I promise you that in the next video, I would talk about how I actually use these approaches and implement them using Notion and Google Calendar. And yes, I know that this video should have come way earlier, my apologies, but when I made that video, I was still in the process of revising my previous approach and it actually took me way longer than I expected. But I hope that you will forgive me and that this video still comes in time to help you design your own productivity and organization system. And I guess by now I've let you wait long enough, so let's get on to the video. Let's start with Notion. So the first database that I will be showing you in my Notion is my tasks database. And in my tasks database, I have a number of columns. So I'll just quickly go through them. So the first one is the status and I use icons because I find that it looks a bit cleaner, but I have an inbox status for any tasks that really were just very quickly jotted down. Uh, and where I didn't have the time to fill in all the columns, so I need to look back at them to do that. Then I have an unscheduled status for tasks that I haven't scheduled yet. Then a missing deadline status for when I have a task but where I still have to decide on my sort of self-imposed deadline to make sure that it actually gets done. Then I have my scheduled status for everything that has been scheduled. My snooze status for anything that I know I want to work on at some point, but that is just not really relevant yet. And then I have a done status for everything that's finished and complete. And then the second column is category. And there I just have some categories, personal, university, a life of learning, just the different aspects of my life uh, that I like to divide all my tasks in. And this helps me to create overviews per category as well. I will show you that later in my university Notion page. Notion, no, notion, notion page. I really have trouble pronouncing that, okay. But it's also really sad because someone on TikTok made fun of my accent. And I've been bothered about it for three days straight. Sad, sad, sad. But okay. Then I also have subcategories. So the colors of this correspond to the colors of the categories. So for a life of learning, I have YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. And then for university, I have my courses. Again, this helps me to filter the database for the more specialized pages. Then I have a project column. So if one of the tasks relates to a bigger project, then these two are related. And I will show you my project database in a sec as well. Uh, so that, that makes more sense. And of course, the name of the task, obvious due date and then for any repeating tasks notion sadly still doesn't have a repeating tasks option which i really 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 am annoyed by because if it had a repeating tasks option then this would be glorious uh, but it doesn't so whenever i have a task that is recurring i can put in an interval so every week and then it will automatically check the recurring box and then i will also show you later how i use this to ensure that when a recurring event is completed, I can make sure that I put it again for the next iteration. And as you can see, this database is grouped based on different statuses, uh, just because that helps me to keep an overview. So then I have my project database, and this is where I house my personal goals, but also my school assignments, just anything that is a bit bigger that I need to achieve or want to achieve at some point. So here I have three types of statuses. I have a snooze status again for anything that I need to do at some point, but that is not really relevant right now. Then a thinking of status for any project that I am currently working on and then a completed status. And then again, I have the same categories and subcategories as I had in my tasks database here. And then a name and then the deadline for the project. So that can be the deadline for any like assignment, but also a self-imposed deadline for when I want to achieve my goals so that it's a bit more measurable and I can keep myself accountable. And yes, one of my goals is to reach the monetization threshold on YouTube. I'm actually pretty 
good on track. But if you're watching this video and you enjoy it and you would like to support me, then make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future videos and you can help me to get that cash for the work that I'm doing. Because my student loan debt is really crying. And then to give you an example of how a project like that looks. So in every project I have a linked database to the tasks database that only contains all the tasks that are related to this particular project. So this project is about making Samsung Tab SX Lite templates uh, if you didn't know yet, I have an Etsy shop where I sell templates that you can use for digital note-taking and I'm working on a new collection right now. And these are the tasks that I currently need to be doing for that and I do this for every project. So this is the way in which I implement small action steps. So I set a bigger goal for myself and then I use this task list to break down that bigger goal into smaller manageable tasks that I can easily do to make sure that it all just sounds a lot less overwhelming and a lot more doable and achievable. And a quick way in which I can make this for every project is to make one of these databases with the correct filters, then copy it and then make a template. So this is a template that I have and then every time you can just use this template and only change the filter. But that makes it a bit quicker to make these types of pages for every project that you have going on. So then I have my planner and my planner shows me all the projects that I am currently working on and all my tasks that have deadlines for the upcoming week. And this allows me to keep an overview and just work on the tasks that need to be done this week because sometimes I tend to look ahead a bit too much and then I get a bit overwhelmed so this helps me to sort of simplify my life. So again I have it grouped by status just so I know where to look and especially this unscheduled one is very important because I need to know that everything that is unscheduled will be scheduled at some point and yeah so then this is the overview that I use to actually make my week planning. Oh and before I forget to give credit uh, a lot of this task project database stuff is based on Thomas Frank. He makes great videos about Notion, so definitely check them out if you want to learn a bit more about how Notion works and how you can use it best to increase your productivity and organization. And I'm remembering this because my Google Calendar setup is very much inspired by Jules Acree. She recently made a video about this, so this was the part that I was struggling a lot. Uh, and then her recent video actually proposed a way of scheduling where I was like, whoa, I really need to try this and I've been trying it for the past week and it works like a charm. So I'm definitely going to keep it this way. So my calendar now looks a bit empty because for privacy reasons, I didn't want to put all my events in here. But basically in most of the empty spaces, there will be certain events, things that I need to do. And then the light gray boxes that you are seeing here, they correspond to time blocks that I use to organize my life. So this is my morning routine time block. And these books time blocks are my study time blocks, uh, the hard one is a life of learning time block, my work time block, uh, my learning French time block. And this is how I make sure that I actually have the time to spend on the things that I want to do. So for the goals that I want to achieve, I want to make sure that I plan enough time to work on them. And then these tasks that have already been filled in are also related to my goals. So when I use implementation intentions for my goals, again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure to watch my previous video. Then I want to make sure that at some set point in time, I make sure that I do a certain task that will help me to achieve the goal. So that's here. So this is just my uh, running, walking, meditation. These are those regular habits that I need to be doing in order to achieve some of my goals. And then when planning the rest of my tasks, I go to my planner and I find the stuff that has not been scheduled yet. And then I go to my calendar and put it in a dedicated block. So when I need to do homework, I will put homework. Ta-da! And I do so for all the tasks until every task that I need to do has a place in time so that I actually know exactly what I should be doing when and can make sure that I achieve everything that I want to achieve. Oh, and another thing about Google Calendar is that you can make these tasks repeat. Um, so if you put it to repeat, then you don't have to fill in 
uh, the same task again and again and again every week but you can make sure that it's already in there for uh, as long as uh, you can go on. I guess it just plans it for forever until you tell it to stop. <laughs> and then I'm showing you my daily dashboard and actually I know daily dashboard is not really the right term I guess. Uh, it's not really a full-on dashboard, it's actually really simple. But this has my tasks inbox and my recurring tasks. So the tasks inbox has been set to automatically label everything as inbox. So I can just like type whatever. And then I know to get back to it later uh, to fill in the category, subcategory, make sure that it's all organized in the way that I want it to be organized. And I can change the status to unscheduled or no deadline depending on which of the two it is, but it just gives me the opportunity to quickly jot down stuff without immediately thinking about uh, where to categorize it or what due date to put and that kind of stuff. And then a very quick tip, if you want to make an inbox like this that is also easy to use on your phone, then you can click this, uh, open as page, and then you can favorite this page so that this specific inbox tasks link database is put in your favorites so that you can always quickly access it and i find that especially on mobile this is just a bit easier than when you have um, like the titles and the other database on the page as well and then the second one is the recurring tasks so this is where recurring tasks will pop up if they are completed and their due date has passed because that is when i know that i need to reset the deadline and reset the status to make sure that it pops up again for the next week or two weeks or month or whenever it needs to pop up again. And then the final thing that I wanted to show you is my uni page because of course this channel is for students so I of course cannot not show you how I organize for university. So I have a deadlines overview or project overview with all the projects that I currently need to be thinking of and then hidden the projects that I will need to be thinking of in the future. And then here I have my courses and this is where you can see what I mean with using the categories and subcategories to filter. So here you see all the projects just related to this course and then here you see the tasks just related to this course. And then again, if you want to filter the tasks even more, so if you don't only want to see the tasks just for this course, but just for this project in this course, then you can click the project and see the tasks only related to that specific project. So that was a tour of my Notion and my Google Calendar. I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video and that it was helpful. If you did, make sure to give this video a like so that others might find it as well. And let me know in the comments if you have any other planning and organization related tips or tricks. Also let me know if you have any further questions about planning and organization or any other study related topic that I could talk about in the next video. Thank you again for watching and I wish you lots of love and a life of learning. Mm -hmm.